Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Talking Dirt. This is the first episode of Season 2 of Talking Dirt, also the first episode of the 2018 season. We are fixing to head into the full swing of the 2018 season. We've done had a couple big races, not just races at the beginning of this year, but races at the end of last year that are technically in this season. Last season, I don't know how you'd classify the Gateway Dirt Nationals, but I want to get right into things with some results. Let's start with the most recent results, guys, and... The most recent results are from this year's Wild West shootout, which was amazing. I seen highlights. I did not order the pay-per-view. Unfortunately, I was snowed in, didn't, you know, couldn't make it to uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Josh Calhoun's house to watch the racing with him on the nights that he did watch racing. But on night number one, it was a great show from what I seen of it in the highlights. And Canada's Ricky Weiss, the driver of the number seven, I believe he's in a sweet Bloomquest chassis now. Um, he takes the victory in night number one. Big win for the young man. And you just got to think that that's one way to get the year started off right is to get one win to kick off the Gateway Dirt. I'm sorry, not the Gateway Dirt Nationals. I'm sorry, guys, but the Wild West Shootout. I'll get to the Gateway Dirt Nationals here in a minute. But night number one went to Ricky Weiss, who I thought... Put on one heck of a show, got out, and was able to run the track how he wanted to. Uh, he knew where to go, and the track was in his liking. Let me turn off the TV here so y'all can't see the glare from my sun from my glasses here. Um, but night one went to Ricky Weiss, and night two and three went to Don Shaw. Don Shaw really uh. If we had done like we did last year with Talking Dirt and we had put our predictions on who was going to win the Wild West Shootout or even one race during the Wild West Shootout, I would have not put Don Shaw at the top of any list. Don Shaw was not at the top of my list. He was really, I don't think he was at the top of anybody's list and he just kind of come out of nowhere to be able to kind of shock me along with I'm sure some of the other racing world Don Shaw very good performer very good racer but when you get out there and you have as much talent as he had with last year's uh Wild West Shootout champion Bobby Pierce when you have them out there racing with you and Chris Simpson and um Mike Marler and all these other guys Brandon Shepard when you have all these guys out there racing with you that are just good night in night out they never take a break and they're always good when they're, when they're there you know they're going to run up in the top five every night to see somebody like don shaw who really you know he's good in his area he's good regionally even when he comes to national events he's good nationally but when you compare him with some of the guys that were out there don shaw is not at the top of my list and i've been watching racing and i've been doing talking dirt for over a year now and i've you know, I've been keeping up with this stuff for a long time. I don't think that Don Shaw really stood a chance, and he shocked everybody. Well, he shocked everybody here at the uh, Dirt Track Racing Now crew. He shocked us when he won the first night, and not only did he shock us the first night, I thought that you know somebody like a Bobby Pierce or even a Chris Simpson, who was really running well during the, during the Gateway Dirt Nationals, um, I thought he'd have more of a chance to be a winner than Don Shaw, but not only does he win one night, he comes out and blows my mind by winning two nights in a row, and that was flipping awesome, guys, to see a guy like Don Shaw come out and upset some of the bigger names. Don Shaw, of course, very good racer, like I said, but he's upsetting some big names. He's upsetting the Brandon Shepherds, the Bobby Pierce's, the Mike Marlers. He's upsetting all these guys. He's upsetting champions of series like the World of Outlaws, and, uh, He's upsetting all these guys for two nights straight, which is awesome, and that's one way to kick off a season, guys, and if you ask me, I think Don Shaw is headed for a big season. Expect to see Don Shaw at some big races. If if what I believe is correct, then we will see Don Shaw at races like uh, the Show Me 100, and he will run up in the top five if he can continue the fire that he had from the Wild West Shootout, which ended... I can't remember what day it ended on, but uh, the day that it ended, uh, like I said, I've been snowed in. I can't remember what day it is or nothing, guys. It's been snowy here in uh, south central Kentucky, so 
I've been snowed in, so I'm just now getting caught up on my racing stuff. Uh, as you can see, I have all the winners wrote down, and you know, I have notes taken uh, on different pages. And he just shocked me. If he can keep the momentum running throughout the rest of the 2018 season, expect to see Don Shaw in some big victory lanes. Uh, I'm not saying he's gonna win. Say the show mirror or crown jewel, but he'll definitely be a top contender in this 2018 season. And uh, night four was also a repeat winner of this of the Wild West Shootout, um, and it was actually the winner of the first night, which is Ricky Weiss. And again, like I said, Ricky Weiss carried tons of momentum. You know, you get a big win. No, I'm sorry, not night four. Ricky won night five, but let's wind it on back here to night four, where night four was won by the man that I heard is running the World of Outlaws Craftsman Late Models Rookie of the Year points. Mike Marler won night number four at the Wild West Shootout, and like I mentioned earlier, Mike Marler is a top five guy at any track, any race that he goes to. Uh, of course, he ran well in the uh, World 100 ran well any race that he went to of course the last race i seen him at was ponderosa's uh ponderosa speedway in Junction city kentucky's uh fall classic where he won that event under some controversial circumstances where um zach dome won the race and his tires got tested and it came back to have an illegal substance in them therefore disqualifying zach dome and giving the fifteen thousand dollar win to Mike Marler, but Mike had a heck of a race that night, ran real well that night, and he uh, shows that he is able to win the big races when it comes down to it. Of course, he's won plenty of big races. Uh, I can't remember what race it was. He won years ago, beat the guys of, I believe it was the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, won a big race with a steel head motor, and that is awesome. Mike Marler, Top of the line competitor, and you've heard it right here on Talking Dirt that he is going to be if he runs. I've heard that he's running. I've read nowhere that's confirmed. I've heard it from good sources though that he will be running the World of Outlaws Craftsman Late Models. Um, and if this comes to pass, then we will see Mike Marler at the banquet for the World of Outlaws Craftsman Late Models as the Rookie of the Year. Now, now that all that's out of the way, let's move on to Night 5 where I got a little bit ahead of myself. Ricky Weiss dominated Night 5. There was no doubt about it. I watched most of that race, um, the highlights of the race, and every bit of the highlights I've seen, he was... He had that car rolling, uh, and like I said, he's carrying so much momentum out of this, winning on such a big stage like the Wild West Shootout. He He's coming out of this carrying so much momentum. I look for Ricky Weiss to have one of the top ten seasons out of all the drivers out there. All the drivers. I believe Ricky Weiss is going to have a top ten season, and that's mounting up with my boy Billy Moyer, who I don't know how many races he's run this year. He may be done, and by maybe done, he may run a seat, you know, 50 races. You know, that's how Billy is. But I believe that Ricky Weiss will have a top 10 season out of all the Dirt Lake Model drivers out there. Now, Ricky Weiss did well, but the man that won night number six did well last season and tied Josh Richards' record for most wins in a World of Outlaws Craftsman Late Model season and that was the 2017 world of outlaws craftsman late model champion b shep brandon shepherd who was driving i believe he was driving his uh, b5 that night he was not driving the uh rocket house car he was not driving the number one but um he won the thirteen thousand dollar win finale of the wild west shootout on night number six uh he won that race and I ain't seen the highlights from that yet, but uh, from all the hype that I've heard about it, it was a good race. Of course, every race out there in Arizona is always good. You're always getting good things from Arizona. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we are going to get to the Gateway Dirt Nationals, which was really a special occasion for one young man. On December 15th of 2017, 
Yes, I know it's the 2017 season technically, but I'm counting it as 2018 because it is one of the first races that people look at when they think 20... They don't even look at that race as 2017, or at least I don't in my own eyes. That's the reason we always cover it in January, and we will always cover it in January here on Talking Dirt. But we had a young man to get his first national win in the first a main of December 15th and that young man is the new deal son of the real deal Hudson O'Neill the new deal wins his first national event and that is great this young man's like 16 17 years old out here beating veterans of the sport and you got to think that Hudson O'Neill really is one of the top tier drivers for such a young age he is such one of those guys he's one of those guys that you can see going out and doing something great for instance i was at the world 100 this year i did not expect him to sit on the pole but when it came down to race time on saturday night when the 100 lapper began hudson o'neill takes the green flag and leads him down leads him down to turn one where he got passed by jonathan davenport coming from third who of course led the rest of the race all 100 laps and if you have not seen that you can watch that video I believe you can watch it on Dirt on Dirt uh, in their archives. I think that video is still in their archives. But you can go and watch that video. And you can catch all these videos, all the Wild West shootout, all the Gateway Dirt Nationals on Talking Dirt. So go to Talking Dirt. I mean, not Talking Dirt, but Dirt on Dirt. Go to Dirt on Dirt. Watch all those videos. And uh, now time for December 15th. Second A main winner, who really is a guy that I really look up to. He has a lot of talent, very young he is going to be able to do a lot of things if he gets the right backing. And if he ever decides to run a tour, he's definitely Rookie of the Year contender for whatever tour he decides to be on. And that is the 11 of Gordy Gundaker. Gordy Gundaker won at the Dome. It was a big win for him. Very emotional. Um, of course, I follow Gordy on uh, Facebook and all this. And I've seen him posting videos, his mom posting videos of just the emotion, the pure emotion that came after that win. And congratulations to Gordy and Hudson for winning on night number, I believe it was night number one. I don't think the, I think all he did on Thursday was qualify and maybe ran heat races. I'm not sure, guys. Like I said, I did not watch the Gateway Dirt Nationals this year. So I'm just going strictly off what I could find on the internet. And um, night number two, or night number three, the final night of the Gateway Dirt Nationals saw a kind of a bittersweet win. One that I was definitely, he was at the top tier. One of those guys that I thought would win the Gateway Dirt Nationals, and he did win. And he was also one of the drivers that I thought would be driver of the year. On a... Talking Dirt, if you remember the very first episode of Talking Dirt, way back in January of 2017, if you go back and watch that video, you will hear me mention this young man multiple times, saying that he was going to be driver of the year, which he wasn't. Uh, Bobby Pierce, in his last race, well, his last full-time race in the Bob Pierce race car, won the Gateway Dirt Nationals. And that has to be a huge win for Bobby heading into his new team, which is the Dunn Benson Motorsports team. And that just had to be a huge win for him to think that he's going to carry that momentum out. And if he can carry it into the Dunn Benson Motorsports team, if he can do as good as he did in his uh, father's car, then we have a top prospect for either Rookie of the Year or he may win the Lucas Oil Lake Mall Dirt Series Championship if the Dunn Benson Motorsport team decides to run that way. And um, there's also been one other race that really flies under the radar compared to all these big races. Um, and that race is 411 Motor Speedway's Hangover 40, which was really one heck of a race, guys. Uh, you can watch that on Dirt on Dirt. Excuse me. Um... You can watch that on Dirt on Dirt, and I was there. It was too cold to record, guys, or else that video would have been up on the channel, and you know it would have because I love each and every one of you that watch these videos because you are the greatest fans in all the motorsports, but that race was awesome. Side-by-side uh, -side racing, really lap traffic, gave Donald McIntosh the win, and uh, Riley Hickman finished, 
Wait, was it Riley Hickman? No, it wasn't Riley Hickman. It was um, Lord Corey Hedgecock finished second. Hickman, I think, was there, but Corey Hedgecock finished second, which was amazing. And Casey Roberts, I think, was third. Or maybe I got second and third mixed around, guys. I've slept since December 29th or whenever it was, December 30th, whenever that race was. I've slept since then. Um, but it's been a great season so far. And, you know, with the good races that we've had so far in the 2018 season, just like the 2017 season, this sport is getting pumped up. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of changes being made. This is going to be a historic season. A lot of stuff is going to happen this season, y'all. Y'all can count it, count on it, take it to the bank. It's going to be there. I promise. It's going to be a great season. Um, like I said in the 2017 season, I told you it was going to be great. And what do you know? It was great. Um, not only for us here at the uh, Dirt Track Racing Now crew, but for everybody. Everybody that's watched a dirt race this year, they've seen one heck of a race every night. Of course, I've been at Lake Cumberland Speedway a lot. So, you know, Lake Cumberland Speedway in Burnside, Kentucky, that track is going up and going good. Great season there for them. Great season for Ponderosa Speedway in the limited schedule they were in. Great season for Richmond Raceway. Brownstown Speedway had a great season. All these tracks had great seasons. Florence Speedway had the race of the year with the North-South 100, which, if you ask me, is my favorite race of all time. If you have not watched that race, it's not on this channel, but you can go and you can watch it on other people's channels. I know other people have it on there. Just search it on YouTube, or you can go on Dirt on Dirt and watch that. Because Darwin Dark has everything that I do not. So, um, like I said, y'all, it is going to be a huge season, a great season. Uh, I don't really know what's going to happen this season. Like last season, I said Josh Richards was going to be Rookie of the Year. He didn't even end up running Rookie of the Year points. He just won the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series Championship. I told y'all that it was going to be a great season. In this season, I just don't know. I know it's going to be a wonderful season, a great season of high horsepower, sideways, dirt slinging, door-to-door, -door, wheel to wheel action all season long at every track you're at. And, I mean, I can't give you no predictions on the season because, I mean, my mind's done been blown this season, so anything I say is really, I wouldn't take it to the bank right now, except for that it's going to be a great season. Uh, of course, Driver of the Year Awards will come out at the end of the season just like it did this year, Announcer of the Year Awards will come out at the end of the season just like he did this year for Talking Dirt. Um, and I'm looking for an even bigger, better year here on Talking Dirt. I'm looking for more episodes of Talking Dirt. More episodes of, uh, I don't know if we're going to do a uh, race shop video, of course. Working in a race shop now. Working for Electrals Racing in the KDRA Mini Stock Division uh, at Lake Cumberland Speedway as well as Ponderosa Speedway, Richmond Raceway, all those tracks. Y'all can come see me at those tracks because you best bet that the Electrals Racing Team is going to be there. But don't think just because I'm working on my own racing career as well as other people's racing career that you will not be forgotten. You will not be forgotten because Talking Dirt was here before anybody else and Talking Dirt will remain here. And... I'm going to produce more episodes than I did last season. It's going to be a great season for us. It's going to be a great season for the sport as a whole. And I guess that's all I can say about it right now. We will see how this season develops together. And as always, I will see you down the road at the races. God bless.